Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this afternoon we're having some watermelons for snacks. I'm gonna sketch this half watermelon and some sliced ones on a plate. So here's my current watercolor sketchbook. I use very minimal tools. I use an etcher watercolor palette, two water brushes for painting, and one waterproof fine liner pen for drawing. Let's get started. So the shape of this half watermelon is a three-dimensional shape of um, a sphere cut open. The opening is like the shape of an ellipse of an oval. Now I'm just drawing the rim and the rind, the watermelon using very loose broken lines. And the same for the inside flesh, I use broken lines to suggest, to suggest the textures and the markings on the skin, these stripes. A lot of loose, random, organic broken lines as I observe and feel. Okay. And these triangle shapes of sliced watermelons are very flat cone shapes with angles. Okay, so here it is. The line on the side is really important to show the three dimension of these slices. And here's another slice. Each one is a different shape of triangle. Drawing this thin skin of the watermelon and the rind using very loose lines. Drawing the seeds here and there as I observe. And also the little cracks on the flesh. Okay, so now I'm drawing this outline of the plate, wavy lines. And the rim and the florals on the side very loosely. Now I'm ready to paint with what watercolors. So I'm wetting the flesh areas with clear water. The watermelon has a little bit of um, yellow mixed inside the flesh. So I'm adding that right now. And wet on wet, some magenta pink or red. Very wet and loose and just let these two colors blend together. Don't try to control too much. Just let go and um, don't compare you're painting with the real things because it's never gonna look exactly the same. So now I'm painting the first layer of the skin and the rind with yellow green. Okay, it's very important to wait for this layer to dry a bit. It takes a few minutes depending on the, on the temperature. So now this is still kind of wet on wet, but not way too wet. A more um, strong magenta red with less water and more paint pigment. Okay, so same as these triangle slices, using very loose brush marks to show the texture of the flesh. Because if you look at the watermelon's flesh, it's not completely flat. Some parts are a little bit darker and some parts are uh, much lighter. Second layer for the skin, verdin green, mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre, very loosely, and wet on wet, an even darker shade, verdin green. Very thin brush strokes to draw the skin. Same as this one. Now it looks sharper. Okay, so now I'm just painting the florals of this plate with leftover. Cerulean blue, mix of um, ultramarine blue and purple for the shade part of this white plate. 
so the color of watercolors might be fading a little bit as it dries. So now I'm adding even stronger retouches of um, pink, magenta red, with less water and more paint pigment here and there, and another quick layer of green. So now I'm painting the shadows of these watermelon pieces using a mix of ultramarine blue, purple, and a little bit green. So darker around the edges. And then I decided to paint a blue platform for, the, for these watermelons so they can connect and stand out better. Now I'm painting the shadow of the plate and the half watermelon. And again, darker around the edges. So there's more contrast. And just adding some final retouches here and there, adding these floral colors very loosely. Okay, so here is the finished sketch. Let's see what I'm going to paint next to make this page more interesting. The sunset sky today is looking really gorgeous and I know the clouds are going to evolve and turn into orange and pink very soon. I'm going to sketch in my art journal. So instead of doing an individual separate frame, I decided to kind of collage this sunset scene with the watermelons below. I think it's going to look more narrative and interesting compared to, uh, to have an, just an isolated framed sketch. Over the years, I've been sketching this view numerous times, so I'm really, um, I'm really sure what I'm doing. So I started with the rooftops and I connected the, uh, the trees beside it on the uh, left hand side and more trees below adding the window frames and the window details, the little rooftops. There's another chimney there on the right hand side, very close to the one on the left. Adding more rooftop structures behind. More outlines of trees. I'm drawing really quickly instead of matching exactly what's out there, I'm trying to just capture the overall essence, the overall feel of the tree's outlines. There's this evergreen tree in the foreground. Very loose organic lines, doing that very quickly. I found that the, the faster I draw, the looser it is and the more lively. And keep adding more details for the houses there window frames. Most of these houses are being covered by the trees and bushes, so it's not that difficult to capture. And keep it really simple instead of adding way too much details, especially for the trees. Just adding a few scribbly lines to suggest the texture of the leaves and adding a few twigs. That's it for the drawing part. As you can see, the clouds are getting more orange color. Okay, I'm gonna paint with watercolors now. I just wetted the sky area with clear water and adding the brightest colors first. A blend of medium yellow and orange using very thin brush strokes. My impression of the clouds outside. And then I'm blending on cerulean blue super loosely, even though it's covering some parts of the, uh, the trees, it's okay. Just really enjoying this blending process here. Now I'm gonna paint the trees. The mix of viridian green and yellow ochre. This is just the first layer for the trees, the lightest tone of green. 
now these this green color is, is having a really great contrast with the flesh of the watermelons below. Now I'm adding some thin brush strokes of orange mixed with a little bit of purple to create a shade color for these orange yellow clouds as I observe. Very loose brush strokes because I know the sky is out there is changing every second. So it's not possible to capture it exactly. I'm trying to capture the movement and the change of the cloud in my brush strokes. And now I'm just painting the rooftops. Start brown. And the windows is kind of like turquoise color. Quickly painting the body of the houses and the rooftops. Now this is the second layer for the trees. Mix of meridian green with a little bit of brown. Loose broken brush strokes. The second layer is adding more depth or thickness for these bushes and trees. Okay, just keep it really loose. There's no need to um, go into super detail because this, this is just a sketch. And my goal is just to capture my impression of the colors, not the details. And I'm painting this tree in the foreground with a darker green tone because objects in the foreground should look stronger. So it grabs the viewer immediately into the picture. Adding a few twigs. And here is the look of my art journal spread so far. I pretty like the composition. It's really dramatic with the scenery outside my window and the watermelons below. Really nice contrast of uh, red and greens. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates and in my next video, I will show you how I finish this page spread.